welcome to our channel dissection of human body we are going to have a series of videos on osteology of head and neck osteology of head and neck includes the skull and mandible plus the cervical vertebrae the structure of the skull external feature of the skull can be studied by looking at it from various angles the study of the lateral view of the skull is known as the norma lateralis when you are looking at the skull from above it is called norma verticalis and the posterior view is norma occipitalis when you are looking at the skull from front it is called norma frontalis and the basal view is norma basalis in this video we are going to discuss about norma occipitalis my colleague dr aparna mulidharan will discuss about the external features of the norma occipitalis over to her hello viewers today we are going to see norma occipitalis so what is norma occipitalis the posterior view of the skull is called as norma occipitalis so what you can see here is norma occipitalis what is the shape of norma occipitalis extending from one mastoid process to the other mastoid process through the vertex it looks like a horseshoe shape first let us learn the bones that can be seen in norma occipitalis after which we will see the features here so the bones that can be seen here are the two parietal bones squamous part of occipital bone and the mastoid parts of temporal bone what are the sutures that can be seen here we can see the posterior end of the sagittal suture between the two parietal bones we can see the lambdoid suture present between the parietal bones and the squamous part of occipital bone we can see the posterior end of parieto mastoid suture as well as occipito mastoid suture at the meeting point of these sutures there are some important points so the first point that you can see here is this this is called as lambda lambda represents the meeting point of sagittal and lambdoid sutures this is unossified in a newborn and it is called as posterior fontanel when it completes its ossification it forms lambda by 1 to 2 months of age similarly at the lateral part where the lateral end of lambdoid suture meets with the parieto mastoid and occipito mastoid suture is a point called as asterion which represents posterolateral fontanel or mastoid fontanel in a newborn and it ossifies completely by around 1 year of age a little in front of the occipito mastoid suture on the mastoid part of temporal bone we can see a foramen which is present on both the sides this is the mastoid emissary foramen that transmits mastoid emissary vein that communicates the scalp veins in this region to the sigmoid venous sinus now let us see the features which can be seen in the squamous part of occipital bone which contributes to the major portion of norma occipitalis the characteristic feature in the squamous part of occipital bone is this large eminence which is its striking feature here this is called as the external occipital protuberance the highest point or the most prominent point of the external occipital protuberance is called as ineon diverging from the external occipital protuberance towards the mastoid process are a pair of lines one on each side which is called as the superior nuchal lines the two superior nuchal lines along with the external occipital protuberance demarcates the head above from the neck below so the superior nuchal lines divide norma occipitalis into a planum occipital above and a planum nuchal below so since superior nuchal lines represents the upper end of the neck the investing layer of deep cervical fascia gets its attachment here coming down from the external occipital protuberance to the posterior end of foramen magnum is a median elevation which is longitudinal and can be seen clearly in some bones this is called as the external occipital crest 
from the midpoint of the external occipital crest, we can see another pair of lines, one on each side diverging laterally. This is called as inferior nuchal lines. Apart from this, above and parallel to the superior nuchal lines, there is an ill-defined line that runs laterally, which is called as the highest nuchal line. So, the external occipital protuberance, external occipital crest and the three pairs of lines, namely the highest, the superior nuchal line and the inferior nuchal line gives attachment to several structures. Let us see them one by one. Attached to the highest nuchal line, medially we have the lower posterior attachment of the galea aponeurotica which is the fourth layer of the scalp. Attached to the lateral part of highest nuchal line is the occipital belly of occipitofrontalis muscle. As I have already said, to the external occipital protuberance and superior nuchal line, we have the attachment of investing layer of deep cervical fascia. Apart from this, there are three muscles attached to the superior nuchal line. Medially, we have attachment of trapezius. Laterally, extending up till the mastoid process, we have two muscles attached, sternocleidomastoid above and splenius capitis below. The area between the superior nuchal line and inferior nuchal line also gives attachment to two muscles. Medially, it is semi-spinalis capitis and laterally, we have obliquus capitis superior. To the inferior nuchal line and the area below, we have again two muscles. Medially, it is rectus capitis posterior minor and laterally, we have rectus capitis posterior major. All these muscles will be encountered while dissecting the suboccipital triangle. So to summarize the features of norma occipitalis, we have lambda which represents posterior fontanel in a newborn. We have asterion that represents mastoid fontanel. We have the external occipital protuberance with the superior nuchal lines that divides the head from the neck to which the investing layer of deep cervical fascia and three important muscles are attached. And all the other structures can be seen in the suboccipital triangle. Thank you for your patient listening.